welcome to our video guides on how to use WordPress and in these videos we'll be looking at the basics of WordPress and just generally how to use them for your website. Once you've logged in to WordPress and the way you do that normally is you'll be at the login screen. So you'll come to the login screen which you'd have been given by your web designer or developer and we'd afforded you the information if we'd done the install for you. And you'll put in your username and your password. You can choose for the computer to remember for you if you like. And then you just go ahead and log in. If you haven't uh, remembered your password, you've forgotten, you just hit lost password, fill out the email address on the account and it will send it to you. So let's go ahead and log in. Now when we first log in here, we can see the dashboard laid out. And if you get this yellow banner here saying WordPress and a new version is available, you can go ahead and update and in other videos we'll actually show you the update process. For this particular video we just want to keep it simple and give you a short introduction to the actual dashboard itself. As you can see here the little house or at the dashboard. And whenever you're anywhere in WordPress if you want to get back to the screen just look for this icon, hit dashboard and it's going to reload the actual site for you. Now, at the moment, if I show you the site, there's nothing on it. We're starting fresh here. It's just an install. We've got a standard design here. There's no posts at the moment, and there's no categories that have been set up as well. We've actually just edited the one that's called uncategorized, and when I come to that in a minute, I'll show you that as well. Just for um, an overview, this central screen here, this tells you what's happening right now, so how many posts you've got. Any pages, now the About Us page is default with WordPress, it adds one for you with no wording on it, it's awesome, just gobbledygook words, but there is a page set up. The normal category is called Uncategorized, if I click this link, you'll see we'll go to the categories. Now I changed it to the word News, you can change it to whatever you like, just by doing what I did. Click on the category, and if you choose to click Edit, you wanted to set it back to uncategorized you could and you just type that in here the slug now this is basically a repeat of the actual name but you use lowercase and if you were going to have say a couple of words i suggest you use underscore etc so you can make that and it will link nicely and this is all to do with keywords and being found by the search engines it's just how wordpress works the description you can put in the description here you can change it when you're ready you just hit update so again, I want to get back to that front screen. I hit dashboard. You can carry on looking at what's happening here. We have no tags at the moment, and we'll look at tags in an, another section when we come to actually creating a post. Um, you can set up tags beforehand, but I want to show it when we actually do our first post. It's just easier that way. Comments. Well, if we've got any comments pending or comments that have been posted, they'll appear here. Ones you've approved ones that are pending and ones that have been marked to spam that's the comments will be listed here for you quick press you don't need to worry about this for now recent comments will be if there's any comments links uh, if any links to you from google this will show here but it doesn't always work you need to do some configurations plugins here it just tells you what most popular plugins are at the moment news um newest plugins that are available recently updated ones so if you're going to add plugins which again we'll cover in future videos you can see what's happening alongside wordpress here and then this is actually posts from the wordpress blog talking about any security announcements latest releases etc so the main part we want to focus on in this video just for now is the basics that you want to be learning about and they are these things down here Posts is quite self-explanatory. If we click posts, then you come here to actually either add a new post, you can change the categories from here, or even the post tags that we talked about as well. Once your posts start to appear, and we've created a first one, they'll also appear here in this main part of the window just here. And you can go in and edit them and make changes if you like. And again, when we come to a section where we look at actually making a post, we'll look at how we can do that. Under media, media is just basic information that you don't really need to know about at this stage. You can add new media attachments to the gallery to use later. Links is where you want to add links on your site. These are the standard ones here. So if you're going to actually put um, allow linking on your site going to other sites, then these are the ones that uh, WordPress puts in as default and they call them 
blog role. Now, don't get this categories confused with the post categories. This one is literally to do with linking only, and it can be found link categories under the link section. So you can give different names like sites we recommend or my other business sites or whatever it is if it's related to your business. You can edit those here. Pages we talked about earlier on on the dashboard. This is like, as I said, the About Us page. You know, if I actually open it in a new tab, here you can see the About Us page information is normally written down here. And as you can say, this is an example of WordPress page. You can edit it, etc. If I show you the actual site, you can see this is the About Us page here. This comes standard with defaults, so unless it's been edited for you already, you'll actually find this here and you can put some information about the company. If you want to add new pages, self-explanatory, and again, in a future video, we'll actually go through looking at adding a new page. Comments again, if you want to see comments people have posted, you can click this here and you'll be able to see comments and also do editing of them. Appearance, this is more about the appearance of your blogs. If you want to change the theme, how it looks and feels, if you want to add widgets, these are more advanced things, then we can go into these later. And some themes we can edit the background color. So if I open our blog, here you can see we've got a gray background. If I wanted to change that to a bright blue, I could come here and edit it. Otherwise, you need to do it in the editor itself and it gets a bit more complicated. And in this particular theme, we're also allowed to edit the header as well. If I click header, you can see here we could change the image. So at the moment, we've got this one here. Let's say I wanted to put something a bit different. So let's put a more autumn type theme. Hit save changes. Let's go back and refresh our page. Here you can see we've changed the header of our blog. And you can do that. And again, it will depend on the theme that you have installed as to what options you can edit and change within this appearance section. Plugins, again, uh, when we install plugins for our clients, we automatically put some in place already that have been installed. That's why you see a few more here than you might do usually. And if you want to add a new plugin, you can do so. Now, again, this is a bit more advanced. When you very first start with your blog, you probably don't want to or even need to start adding plugins but we will show you how to add a plugin in a later video. Editor, I talked about earlier on. This is where we can edit a bit like where we're in the appearance. We can go to edit and you can start editing actual pages. You can do that inside the plugin editor as well. You can manually edit code. I'll just take you back to the appearance, show you the editor there. And all the pages that make up WordPress, you can actually come in here and edit the code if you know what you're doing. Users, again, self-explanatory. You start with one. It's normally called admin. And you can add more new users from here if you like to and configure them. And again, in another video in the future, we'll show you how to add a new user. You can also go to your profile. And inside your profile, you can set things like the visual editor, the color scheme, any keyboard shortcuts, the names, the information, website, your Yahoo, IM, some biographical data. You can even change the password here as well. So where you log in at the beginning with admin, if you want to change a password, just come along here and make a new one. Make sure it's got a good strength. And I'd suggest reading the hint that's here. Update the profile and then just remember that you've now got a new password. Under tools. You'll find things such as importing and exporting. Again, for the beginner, you don't really need to worry about this. And under settings, you change the general settings of your blog, such as the tagline, the main title, the actual address. Again, these will normally stay as they are when you first install them, an email address, information about who can sign up for membership, the default role when someone signs up, you can choose here. Set the date and time format and and also a week starts and you can choose the day of the week it's going to start as well. Writing. This is where you actually choose size of the post box, 10 lines when you're writing settings, how it's formatted, uh, the default category that it will go to if you don't select one. We only have one set up if you remember and the same with links. So these are default to begin with. But once you've added more categories, you can change them here. Press this, is a, there's a bookmark, a little app that runs in your browser and lets you grab bits of the web. Again, you can just leave this one for now. Posting via email, not important at this stage, you're just going to be using by web. But in later videos and advanced series, we may start to show you how you can set up where you can actually just log into an email account, send an email to your blog, 
and it will then post it as a post. But it's always better to come and use the WordPress panel itself when you can. Same with remote publishing information and the update services. Pingomatic is enough for now, but we can add more if you want more um, to be notified whenever you make a post. Once you complete, you hit save changes. Regards to reading. So you can choose here what's displayed, your latest post or a static page. How many blog pages will show at most on your front page. And again, you want to leave most of these as they are. If it's not been set up for you on summary, it's always good to select summary here rather than having the full article. And then you choose save. Discussion. This is where you configure information about article settings, um, about when people post to you or uh, make a comment, where you'll be emailed and to be notified that a comment's been made, and then what has to happen, rules before an actual comment will appear. You can also have moderation information down here, blacklisting, and this is what's called avatars, um, where if people want to have, you've got a little message like we used a Gravatar logo. So if someone's got a Gravatar logo avatar, when they post, if they're actually on Gravatar, it will show a little picture of them in your comments as well. Media. Basic information like the thumbnail size. Again, uh, this is more once you start getting used to the site and actually wanting to get more involved. But initially, these settings that have been set for you will be fine. Privacy with whether or not you want your website to be found by search engines. And in most cases, you'd want them to be. Permalinks just tells WordPress how to display your comment. We normally set it to month and name. The default when it's first installed is at uh, question mark P equals. So every post that is on your blog will just have a number. Whereas for the SEO purposes, for the search engines to find you, it's always better to actually have the post name. And this particular one has been installed as an additional one. It's block spam by maths. This basically means if someone comes to your site and wants to make a comment, this has been installed to make them actually answer a very simple math question so that if they don't get it right, or more importantly, it's to stop uh, what's called bots coming along and just spamming your blog and putting loads of posts on because it doesn't normally pick it up and can't actually add up and do the calculation because it doesn't see it. Whereas a human coming to the site will see the question make the simple answer, and then their post comments will come to you for basic authorization. And that is a simple overview of the dashboard. It sounds like a lot of information at the beginning, but that's just the basics. If you're using the blog and you are perhaps a customer of SA Web Designs, for example, where the blog's been installed and configured for you, the most things you're going to be really using are going to be posting, maybe adding links and pages, managing the comments, and the other parts to the blog, apart from perhaps adding a user if your business is expanding and you want to bring in new users who can post articles and content for you. Otherwise, you won't be using much of the features here. Your main time will be spent on posts, links, pages, and then just managing comments as they come in from the public. Thanks for watching this video.